In this video, we're going to be looking at Hazura. Looking at the website, they describe Hazura as being able to connect your database and microservices and instantly gives you production ready GraphQL API. That's awesome because I want to go straight from nothing to everything as quick as possible. And I'd rather not have to configure a whole bunch of GraphQL server options. By the way, if you guys find it interesting or helpful, please like and subscribe below. So there's a huge link here on the web page. Try it out in the 30 seconds on Heroku. So let's do that. Clicking down here will give you uh, a sign up so you can fill in some form fields, get yourself registered and start declaring the name of your uh, new container for Heroku. So down at the bottom here, we have two links. One takes you to a Heroku management console uh, that allows you to change environmental configuration, billing options. We're going to be rolling with a free, a free tier, which gives you quite a lot of bang for the buck, actually. Um, and the only caveat to that is it will run fairly well, slowish. It's going to spin up the container, spin up the instance when you request it, then after a period of time it's going to go to sleep. The other page is the Hazura console. In here we, we've got a few options at the top. Um, the main ones we're going to look at today are the data tab and the GraphQL tab. The first thing we want to do after we've got Hazura installed is to put some security in place through authentication. Now this can be done back at Heroku. So what they call it in Hazura land is a, an admin key. So we can set that on the environmental configuration back on Heroku. So in settings, if you click on that and then click on the reveal config vars, it's going to bring up all the variables for the system. Um, so we're, we're going to go and generate just uh, like a long, randomly generated key that we can use. And we're going to set that against the Hazura GraphQL admin secret. And you can use anything you want here, some sort of passphrase or password that you use. I just generated a random string. Logging back into Hazura now, you can see that as it doesn't have a, an admin secret already associated, it's going to ask us for the admin secret. Now at the top here, you can see that there's X Hazura admin secret set as a request header. So if you ever wanted to go from Postman, now Postman now supports um, GraphQL. So in theory, you could supply your own X Hazura admin secret in Postman to Hazura, and that would work. So let's go and start building our tables for Community Raves. Now, Community Raves is obviously, as the name sounds, it's community based. And a community could be anything, but in this context, a community is a, a community of houses or close to where you live. And a community is within a city. And so we're going to model the entities of city and community. And which that should give us the backbone uh, to start building our application off. Going through the process of building out these tables should be fairly similar to if you've ever used MySQL or um, SQL Server Management Studio. It's the process of identifying the table, 
putting in the columns, calling out their you know, primary keys and unique constraints, that sort of thing. So the columns are defined here and we're going to go down and identify the primary key. Once the table's been created, you can see it appear on the left hand side. So after it's been created, let's go and insert some rows. Now we've done that, let's go and add a community. Now the community is related to the city through a foreign key being the city ID. So that's something we're going to take into consideration when we're adding our columns. At this point we create our foreign key, pointing back to our city. We're almost done with our table setup. We're just going to add some communities, then we can move on to the GraphQL side of things. So this next body of work is really um, exposing relationships from a GraphQL point of view, from a binding point of view. So when I built my application, I didn't do these until I needed them. But maybe we can just define them and they'll be available for us in GraphQL. So when you go to the Relationships tab, it suggests things that are, it thinks are relationships based off, I guess, foreign key relationships. So, for example, we know that there's a relationship now between community and city. And that's a navigable thing. So we should be able to get, depending on how you look at it, you should be able to get the communities for a given city, and you should be able to get the city for a given community, given that there's a, a relationship going on there, whereby a city has many communities, and a community has one city. Nice. So this final tab at the top is permissions and you can think of permissions as which users or which groups are going to be doing things against GraphQL. And for community raves, it has a series of different groups of users. So there's the out of the box default administrator, which you are right now. <clears throat> and the administrator will have full access to everything. And we're going to go and create an anonymous user. And the anonymous user is really someone who's visiting the website and they're not logged in. And so in theory, they're going to have read access to a lot of stuff. Ignore the with custom check radio button here. We'll come back onto that later in the series. Right now, it's fine for us to roll with without any checks. And these checkboxes allow role anonymous to access columns. We're granting read access at a column level, so you can be very granular. Perfect, now we've finished building our tables, populating with data, setting permissions, 
and also exposing relationships. Those relationships will appear in our graphical explorer. We'll be able to use GraphQL to traverse those relationships back and forth between city and community. You've got two ways of interfacing with this explorer. Um, one is on the left hand side is, is the tree driven approach where you can see the, the hierarchy and you can click on properties that you want within the tree and they will write themselves into the middle panel which is the actual underlying query and on the far right panel you'll see your results. So the middle panel is basically the output that we'll be taking and copying and pasting into our code. So the left panel we can play with, the middle panel we can copy, we can take as our uh, actual query. You can see in this example, I've got a blending of two different things. I've got both communities and I've also got cities. And this is just a silly example, but it shows how you can mix the data sets. And just briefly, I'll erase the query that I was running and you can see that it's prefixed with query, if you're wondering. And I'm gonna erase the query and I'm gonna swap it out for mutation. And I guess these map nicely logically in your head to a query being a query and a, a command or an ex execution on, on the underlying system you can think of as being a mutation. So we've got queries and mutations. So I'm just going to throw in a quick mutation just to insert some data. Awesome, there it is.